Howdy, 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 everyone. Tad Stevens on the Micro Success Secrets podcast, where we focus on business psychology and marketing and how you can use that in your business uh, daily and long term. Today, I'm talking with Thomas Galati, who is currently the sales director at Diary Media, which is a direct response focused media buying agency. Tom's experience uh, ranges from platforms and publishers like Microsoft, LinkedIn, uh, leaders in ad tech such as Rocket Fuel and Seismic. Uh, he's worked with Unilever, Delta, Exxon Mobil, as well as startups uh, wanting to get into the Fortune 500. He also serves on the board of the Michael, Michael Magro Foundation, hope I pronounced that properly, uh, which is a nonprofit dedicated to helping families affected by pediatric cancer. He lives in New York with his wife and three kids. Tom, how are you doing? And if you would take a minute, introduce yourself and let us everybody know anything I missed. Uh, good morning, Tad. How are you? Uh, uh, I'm doing great. It's uh, it's a Friday, uh, which is which is nice. Um, looking forward to the weekend. A little rainy here in New York, but uh, I'll take that uh, over a sunny Monday, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, you <clears throat> you covered uh, you know a, a lot of things uh, about me per professionally. Um, like you said, uh, to maybe just touch upon some more personal stuff. Uh, I live on Long Island, uh, just about an hour outside of New York City. Um, passionate about cars. I uh, belong to the Mustang Club uh, of America, and I've owned, uh, I think, about five Mustangs. Uh, oh, cool. I've recently yeah. I, I'm recently sorry. i got to interrupt. I love Mustangs. Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, I please, love please Mustangs. Do. Go we, ahead. I'm good. Please continue. We, we could dedicate the rest of the podcast uh, to, to the Mustangs <laughs> if you'd like. But uh, I've owned uh, uh, the, the oldest one I've owned was a 1967 that I bought when I was 14 years old with my dad. Uh, we restored it, and I, I wish I had that car today, but I've owned a few along the way. Um, I think one of the coolest uh, is a 68 Mustang uh, Fastback GT um, that looks just like the one from the movie Bullet uh, with Steve McQueen. That was uh, one of the coolest cars I think I've owned. Okay, you don't know this, but that is my favorite car of all time. Oh, Literally. wow. I mean, I'm not kidding. The Mustang Fastback 67, 68, and it probably came from Bullet, uh, but... No, I always wanted one of those when I was a kid. Maybe someday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, what we're going to talk about today is just the things that brought you to where you are. Um, things that other people, listeners, uh, may be struggling with, may have run into, could benefit from uh, your experience, and uh, things that they can take away from that. So if you're ready, we'll just get started. Yeah, definitely. So I think I could point to some things in my professional career and then also with the Michael Magro Foundation. Um, I could explain in, in a minute or two how I got okay. started there. But, you know, as you mentioned in, in your introduction, I've spent a lot of time uh, in sales, uh, mostly on the digital side, selling uh, advertising solutions uh, for, for a few years at each of these places, including Microsoft which would include, you know, Bing and some interesting things that they were doing with Xbox, mm -hmm. uh, Yahoo, um, which actually had uh, a lot of scale and some great content in the time that I was there. Uh, and then also LinkedIn. And that was probably one of the most interesting, uh, one of the most interesting places that I've worked uh, because I was on the advertising side. So most of us know LinkedIn as, uh, you know, a great place to go to uh, connect with other mm -hmm. professionals. It's a great place to go to look for a job or be, um, you know, solicited for a job. But, uh, you know, along the way, uh, as they've done all of those things that I just mentioned, they've also acquired about 700 million people globally uh, who are professionals. Um, and there's an opportunity for marketers to engage with them, especially as that platform moved to be more social, you know, with the yeah. newsfeed, much like, much like Facebook or Instagram. And so I worked with companies like Delta Airlines, for example, uh, leverage the platform and the data on the platform to reach the next generation of business travelers. And uh, one of the things that we did there, which was a lot of fun, which we basically took the profile of their existing frequent business travelers. And we looked at what do they look like on, on the LinkedIn platform, uh, in, in, you know, by way of what are their titles and what are the types mm -hmm. of companies that they work for. And then we kind of took a step back and said, okay, well, where did they go to school? And, uh, you know, which universities um, tend to churn out the people that work for those companies, whether it's like a JP Morgan or a Deloitte, um, Accenture, you know, some of the companies where, uh, you know, business travel is a must and business travelers must choose an allegiance one way or the other. And 
you know, the best thing that you could do if you're Delta, Starwood, or Marriott is to create relationships with uh, business travelers before they become business travelers. Yeah. And so oh, we did sure. some creative things. We did some creative things on the platform uh, for uh, for Delta and a few other uh, travel marketers. But going back to your question, uh, I feel like I was very fortunate to network with the right people early in my career and create relationships where once I was able to make a name for myself, um, I was able to carry those relationships out throughout my career and, uh, and use those, uh, some of those people as mentors um, to bounce ideas or questions off of them um, or use them as a reference in some cases when I was applying for a job or, or an introduction to someone if I was looking to go work somewhere. Um, so I think relationships are key. And, um, you know, LinkedIn, you know, fortunately uh, allows you to, uh, you know, very easily find other professionals that might be outside of your immediate network. Um, but I, I think one of the common themes throughout the course of my career was, um, you know, creating relationships with people and continuing to network through those relationships. Okay. Okay. Well, that kind of leads into a question that I have is in that relationship building or in that, um, in that time span, is there anything that you would change that if you look back and you say, Oh, there's one thing that if I'd done that, or I wished I had that, that came up, is there any one thing that comes to mind? Uh, let's see. I would have bought Apple stock, uh, about 10 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> that's one thing I definitely would have done. I hadn't I heard that. I've asked this question a lot. I hadn't heard. That's a good answer. I like that. <laughs> <clears throat> or, or Amazon stock, uh, closer to IPO. Um, <laughs> I have a good knack, uh, Tad, of buying high and selling low. That's been a, a, a <laughs> you and me, that, you and me both. <laughs> those, those are my secrets to investing. Uh, it's very easy that way. You don't have to worry about ma watching the markets very closely because I just find that I have a knack of doing that. Yep. Um, let's see. That's a that's a great question. I think there are um, maybe some companies that I might have overlooked. You know, I think. Um, that might have been interesting to go after some some mm -hmm. mobile types of of companies because I think you know there was a long time in my career on the digital side of our business where everyone kept saying well this is finally the year of mobile you know from a from an advertising right. yeah. standpoint uh -huh. and uh, you know I, I think there were some companies um, you know that I, I perhaps overlooked or didn't take seriously enough because I was just kind of following not following the herd so to speak but following the, the trends of what I saw or perceived as the trend. So I think maybe being, you know, in terms of lesson learned from that, maybe being a little more open to um, dig a little bit deeper on some of the opportunities in front of you that could actually prove to be you know, beneficial or, or lucrative. Okay. Well, along the same lines, is there, is there a point that in your business career or life that, that you look at and you think, you know, you look at it like everything that came before it and everything that came after something that's super positive that just defined where you are now. Yeah. I, I think there was a gentleman that I met. His name is Kirk McDonald and he's now uh, uh, the president at one of the large holding companies uh, for the large agencies, um, uh, WPP. And I met him when I went to go work at, at CNET. He was the senior vice president of sales and, uh, mm -hmm. and operations. And I was a junior account executive, uh, very green, very early in my career. This is uh, uh, early 2000s. This is around 2004, I believe. And I had the good fortune. I don't think any, I think everything happens for a reason. I don't really believe in co coincidences. And that's just, mm -hmm. that's just me. I know people have different views on that. Um, I had the good fortune of sitting literally the first desk right outside of his office. And I would uh, turn around sometimes and, and ask a question of his admin uh, about, you know, uh, an assignment coming up or a meeting if it's canceled or on or mm -hmm. things like that. And then occasionally we would order uh, lunch and I would turn around and say, hey, uh, we're ordering Chinese food. You know, if Kirk wants Chinese food today. <laughs> and uh, It's important. No, it is. <laughs> it, no, it, it is. And so she was like a little taken back because I think people wouldn't, you know, just think that Kirk was sitting in his office and might be craving Chinese food just as I was. And hey, um, everybody gets got to have lunch. Exactly. And so there were many occasions where he said, yes, I would. Please tell for me you ever ordered for me last time. And sometimes, actually, this was another benefit is, you know, he would put down the corporate Amex and say, you know what, uh, for the few of you guys ordering lunch today, it's on me. <laughs> Buy lunch. And yeah. uh, so it was even better. 
Uh, but what was happening was as I would go drop off the lunch after the delivery came, uh, his admin would say, hey, you know what? Uh, Kirk's not busy right, right this second. Why don't you bring, bring it into him? And I think she was helping me out because I also had a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kirk was actually a car enthusiast as well. Uh, he uh, still is into Porsches and BMWs, um, a little more highbrow than my uh, taste. Mm -hmm. uh, I love those cars. But, um, but so we started talking about cars. And actually, I was in the market to buy a car at the time. And I was picking his brain a little bit. And then I was picking his brain about the future of CNET. And, uh, and one thing that stuck with me was um, I worked with him for about a year and a half. And he took a position a little more senior at a company that was ultimately going to be acquired by Microsoft. And I said, Kirk, I'm so sad that you're leaving. Uh, I, I really want to continue working with you and uh, I hope we keep in touch. And he said, don't worry, we will. And I said, no, I know, I know we do. He, and he looked at me right in the eye and he said, no, don't worry. We'll be working <laughs> together again soon. And so he took a liking to me and, and uh, he saw something in me. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, because uh, I, I would point to that in my career as one of the single most um, inspiring moments, because uh, not only did I learn a lot from him, you know, on a daily or weekly basis, but uh, ultimately, um, you know, he saw something in me and was able to help bring me along to some of the companies that he worked for, including uh, the company that was acquired by Microsoft. Yeah. And, but I also want to bring up here that you saw that value in that relationship. I mean, you cultivated sure. it, you, you saw it uh, and, he acknowledged it and went forward with it. So, okay, super. Um, change a little bit here. It, and this is kind of a general question for, for people, um, in, especially in the creative space, uh, because I one of my biggest drawbacks, I guess, uh, is writer's block. I, I am not a great copywriter. I aspire to be better. Um, but I get writer's block. I don't want to start certain projects. Basically, I get stuck. And I ask everybody, do you have any tips, methods, techniques that you use, especially in the, in the industry that you're in, when you get stuck on something, how do you get by that? How do you move forward? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think there's, there's that old adage, um, I'm trying to remember exactly how, it, how it's worded, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess it up a little bit, but um, it, it's basically, uh, you know, ignorance is, is – uh, the definition I think of ignorance is um, trying the same thing over and over and exp or expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I think it, you know, it sounds simplistic, but I think just trying something different. Um, so I think for me, that means sometimes, and again, it kind of goes back to, the, you know, relationships and I think bouncing ideas off of someone uh, I've noticed recently, I have a 10 year old daughter and twin boys that are seven. And it's funny because I feel like if I listen to them and their, um, I'm going to say naive approach to things, I feel like it's an eye-opening experience because my daughter will say, well, how come they don't just deliver your dry cleaning like they deliver, you know, with DoorDash or Uber Eats, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and, I, and I feel like I'm like on the verge. I keep picking her brain. Um, uh, and sometimes my boy's like, well, what else are you thinking about? Because there could be a good business uh, in there somewhere, right? Oh, they have... Um, I mean, my kids are much, much older now, um, but they still do. I mean, if they yeah. don't, they just look at and they just ask, you know, question. Why isn't it right. that way? Oh, exactly. well, and I think about it. I go, well, I don't know. Eh. Anyway, no, right. that, think of something different. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think kind of, you know, just think differently. And, and uh, I've, uh, I'll bounce ideas off of someone and say, hey, you know what? Um, I'm having this challenge with my boss and uh, – you know, I feel like I'm being micromanaged and maybe I can manage better. And I'm not talking about now, I'm talking about earlier in my career. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have some advice? And uh, I feel like I'm kind of stuck. I keep doing the same things because it feels like the right thing to do. Uh, it's what I know. Um, but maybe there's a different way that I could be managing up so that it's a better experience for me and for him, uh, the, the gentleman I'm thinking of in my head right now. So mm -hmm. sometimes I, I think just, you know, bouncing ideas off of someone and, you know, it includes my, my spouse too. My, my wife is a teacher. We're not in the same industry. Um, and sometimes that helps too, because, you know, uh, I think, again, you, you, if you think about how you've always done something, um, you're not going to get a different result. So sometimes just bouncing an idea off of my wife uh, can be helpful too, because mm -hmm. it's a different, different point of view. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of covered this a little bit when you, um, when you talked in the introduction uh, and you were talking about the things that you encountered as you uh, grew in your career. Um, is there anything or no, let me put it a different way. If you had to start from scratch in the career you're in, 
is there any one thing that you would do different, do you think? Yes, I think, and I think this is just a general rule for me, something that I've learned from and, and uh, feel like it's really hitting me now. I would have taken more risks. I feel like uh, my parents raised me, um, so grateful for the way my parents raised me, um, but it was a way that it was very um, safe and secure along the way. My father worked for the city of New York for 30 years as an automotive mm -hmm. inspector. And when I left, I was working for a publishing company right before I went to CNET. And I remember I was there for five years and it was a great company, uh, CMP Media yeah. that was purchased by United Business Media, a, um, a British company. And when I left there after five years, my father was floored and he says, what are you doing? Like, you have a great job. There's great benefits there. It's pretty close to home. Uh, what are you doing? And, you know, he was, he was helping to keep me in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. I, I, I sure. appreciate where it was coming from. And again, this is someone who, um, you know, worked extremely hard his entire life and was fortunate enough that, to finish his career at this, uh, you know, great position working for the city of New York, which again was a nice, safe and, and secure position for him. Um, but I think I would, I would have taken more risks. I have this entrepreneurial spirit inside of me. Mm -hmm. And I think um, even in my career, I think I would have done things to be a little more bold. I feel like along the way you watch people around you that are in the same role. And sometimes they go after a position because you think you don't have a chance of going after it. And, you know, they think, well, I, I do have a chance of getting that. And so uh, I think just as a general rule, I would take more chances. And of course, I'm not talking about being, you know, reckless or, or anything like that, but I'm just talking about be, it's okay to fail. And I think sometimes we learn more from our failures than, than our successes. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I think that's very true. Okay. Well, awesome. Um, thank you very much for taking your time to share today and be on the show. Is, uh, is there anything that, that you think that I missed or we left out or anything that you have to offer uh, the listeners that may benefit them? Uh, I think uh, one of the things that I would I would kind of leave everyone with is right now I've been and this is actually how we met Tad um, I've been using LinkedIn and their uh, other platform Sales Navigator to mm -hmm. to do some networking right now and I feel like along the way I can't think of a time in my professional career that I wasn't networking uh, I think you could argue that anything that any time that you leave the house there's an opportunity to network whether it's at <laughs> starbucks or or stop and yeah. shop or wherever you might you know do your grocery shopping things like that uh at church or or you know anything like that there's always an opportunity to meet people and understand more about their business and um and, and things like that but mm -hmm. i'm using this as an opportunity right now it kind of helps that i work from home uh, i know like a lot of people right now are doing and i'm using linkedin to find people outside of my immediate circle uh, not to sell them anything, which a lot of people are caught off guard when I say that on LinkedIn, yep. um, because I think an unsolicited um, outreach is oftentimes perceived that way. And um, I, basically, it, it's just been a fun experience networking uh, during the current situation to meet new people. You understand different parts of your own industry, or maybe they're, they're shifting gears and they're moving to something else that you can also learn about. And you never know what the mm -hmm. future is going to hold. They might end up at a position um, where they have the ability to to, uh, to, to partner with me in some way. Um, maybe we don't even know what that is yet um, or vice versa. I, I actually spoke with someone who had a great um, mobile platform called Vote Frenzy, and I turned around and asked him to come back and pitch my digital team at the agency because maybe that's a, a product that we could be uh, utilizing for some of our clients. So again, it isn't always what is what's in it for me. Um, it could be what's in it for you and who knows down the road that could ultimately lead to what's in it for me. So uh, any advice I would have right now is these are definitely challenging times. No one knows what the future holds. Uh, you know, the election's coming up and there'll be some turmoil after that, regardless of who wins. Um, mm -hmm. Is a vaccine coming and who knows how comfortable everyone's going to be taking it and when we'll all fit into that comfort zone. So there's still a lot of uncertainty coming up in the future, unfortunately, but I always try and focus on what's in my control. And right now I'm, I'm enjoying uh, not only my day job, but networking with other people uh, in and around my industry. Okay, super. Outstanding. Well, thanks again. Thanks uh, to everybody for listening in. Have a very safe and productive week uh, and be the very best at whatever it is that you are doing. Until next time, this is Tad Stevens with Micro Success Secrets. Bye for now. Thank you, Tad.